Hey friends, it's so good to be with you. This past Sunday at our Dublin campus, we looked at the story of Joseph. Now Joseph, he faced many challenges, he faced adversity, yet he had stubborn faith that moved him forward. Today, we're gonna be looking at God's grace. Now Joseph not only faced challenges and adversities from 17 to 30, but he was also born into a family that faced great, uh, I would just say there was some dysfunction. It was pretty messy. His brothers didn't like him, and so much so they plotted to kill him, which ended up leading him to being sold into slavery and into the land of Egypt. Now his own brothers, there's 10 older brothers, would tell their dad Jacob, hey, um, he, he was killed by a wild animal. So his dad never came looking for him. Now Joseph's brothers, they thought, hey, we're never gonna see this guy again. And so they just left it at that. Well, Joseph, he would go to Egypt and God would begin to elevate him even in times where there was great challenges and adversities. See, God knew that he was placing Joseph in Egypt for a specific purpose. And, and, and Joseph, he would steward the God assignment on his life. See, Egypt and the surrounding neighborhoods and cities were about to face a time of great famine. And at 30 years old, Joseph would be brought from the pit to the prison, to the palace, and God would give him revelation and wisdom on how to navigate through a famine. And so God would place him, he positioned him, even when his brothers meant something for evil, God would turn it around for good. And so today I wanna talk about how God's grace is greater. Now, Joseph's family, it was pretty messy and it was hard and maybe today, you, you've walked through seasons with family or friends or with your spouse or with your children, and there's been some relational tension. There's been some things that have just caused great strife and hardship. But I'm here to tell you today that there's hope, that our God is in the business of restoration. Well, in the time that there was great famine in the land of Egypt and in the surrounding areas, Joseph's own brothers would leave their hometown and they would travel to Egypt. And here they would head to Egypt, not knowing that their brother was still alive and having no idea that he was second in command in the land of Egypt, that it was he who was the one that was leading the charge on how to navigate food and resources to the people. Well, his brothers would, would trek from their hometown all the way to Egypt and they would be met with Joseph, not even realizing that it was him. And eventually, Joseph would reveal who he was. See, God wasn't finished with their messy family story. God had more in store for him, for them. In fact, I love how what Joseph says to his brothers in Genesis chapter 45, four through eight. Joseph says this, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I'm not, I am your brother, Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. Now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save the lives that God set me ahead of you. Because it was to save lives that God set ahead of you. For two years now, there has been a famine in the land and for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God set me ahead of you to preserve you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of this entire household and ruler over Egypt. I love this part of the story because Joseph, he reveals his kindness. He reveals his mercy. He reveals his grace. Now he had every, every, every excuse to wanna not forgive his brothers. But here in this moment, we see that he was no longer bitter, that he was not bitter, that he didn't hold it against him, against them, but he knew that God had positioned him in Egypt for a greater purpose and he forgave his brothers. He extended grace, he extended mercy. I love that, he, that, that, that our God is in the business of restoration and so much so that these brothers and, and, and their dad would, would come and Joseph, he would have a place to take care of them he would feed them and he would house them and, and, he, and God was not finished with their story. In fact, it is their family line. It is the line of Jacob that our savior would be born. What this tells me today 
is that this messy family situation that God saw and he wanted to do something even greater in their life, that what the enemy meant for evil, even family division, God would turn around for good and our own savior would be born into the family line, the bloodline of Jacob's family. Today, you might've walked in, you might be facing some hardship, but I wanna encourage you to take hope. God's grace is greater than your biggest mess. God's grace is greater than dysfunction. God's grace is greater than if you have failed a person or if someone has failed you. His grace is greater. Today, I wanna encourage you to be a person who not only receives grace, but extends grace. Today, as we go into this time of prayer, I wanna receive the grace of God over your life, but also let's be people who extend his grace. God, I thank you for this story of Joseph where there's clear dysfunction even in his family, but you weren't finished with their family story. Rather, God, you had greater. You had greater for their family. You restored their family. And what you did then, you love to do today. And so, Father, I pray for the person who needs restoration in family, needs restoration in a relationship, in a marriage. You know the the circumstances that people have walked through, that you are not done, but rather you love to redeem and you love to restore. God, I pray that we would not only receive your grace, but today, God, that we would extend your grace because your grace is greater. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your, the power of your grace. In your name I pray, amen. Hey friend, have a great week. We'll see you here on Sunday.